Hey YouTube, Doug with DD in the garage here. Tonight I am uh, diagnosing and hopefully fixing uh, an emissions leak. So that's going to be like a P04, what is it? P0452, P0454, P0455, stuff like that. Uh, each of those codes is for a different size leak. So the one I'm looking at right now is a P0445. Let's see if I can get you a view on that. Generic evaporative system, emission system leak detected, large leak. All right, you know, every engine is obviously different when you were talking about a uh, Jeep 4.0, like this 2000 uh, Jeep Cherokee, and you're talking about an emissions evap leak, you're talking about this guy right here, usually. This is your uh, leak detection pump. It's essentially just a check system to make sure there are no leaks in your evap system, and all the tubing and pipes that go to your uh, EVAP system usually originate or pass through here. So really all you want to do to try to diagnose a problem like this is you want to come on down here. I'll try to get the light right. You want to come on down here and you want to look at all this stuff. Look at these connections. Look at the uh, it's mostly just the connections. EVAP tubes are not like vacuum hoses. They're this hard plastic. All right, so it's usually not one of them, though I have seen them cracked. All you really need to do to diagnose this, it is a daunting task, but you gotta just take it little by little, all right? So take one line and follow it. Now these lines, most of them come across the back of your firewall. You can see them underneath your uh, harness there. They come around. A lot of them go over here to your head. All right, you can see right down there. Check those connections. Those connections dry rot, especially in the engine bay. Now I happen to know that that's not where my problem is. Okay, we're now back here at the back of the vehicle. You can see there's the diff, the gas tank is back there. That's where all your emission stuff eventually ends up. All right, now right here on this particular vehicle, let me back up to give you some perspective. Rear wheel, driver's side on this XJ. Right there is uh, your charcoal canister and you can see there are tubes going into it. Those come from your EVAP system and are a big part of your EVAP system. Now looking at this box, of those three lines, which one do you think might be the issue? Huh? You've got this guy right here. You can see that the uh, hose, the connection is dry rotted. You can see it's rubbing off on my fingers. The line to it is completely rusted. And that is a return line that actually goes all the way back here to the gas tank and you can see this is the same line this rusty one in the frame right now is the same one from before and I'm pretty sure that my leak is somewhere there all right I don't know if you can tell but the whole length of it is all rusted to heck and so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna replace it and I'm not gonna replace it with steel line my intention is to replace it with this uh, this is evap emissions hose it's hose not like vacuum hose, it's hose that's rated to handle gasoline, meaning it won't melt uh, when you get gasoline on it. I've got 3 16 and I've got quarter inch, and I've got about four feet of each. And um, rather than spend the money on steel line and then have to bend it and all this stuff, uh, I'm just gonna run this stuff and I think it's gonna be a, a perfect fix. Uh, all right, step one is going to be to remove both sides of this cruddy old hose. Now I don't think that's gonna be too hard as this rubber hose holding it on is dry rotted that slid right off all right like i said the other one goes into the gas tank right back here oh yeah you can just feel it flexing and uh it's got no rigidity left to it i think we're just gonna break it that'll be the easiest way to pull it out all right actually i had to go and get some safety glasses there's too much rust falling i think we're gonna have to cut the rubber rubber hose as always trying to not Slice our hand wide open. Who would have guessed that getting this last little bit of rubber would be the hardest part of this project? There we go. All right. All right, now I'm putting just the smallest amount of ATF, mostly just because that's what I had, any kind of oil, right on the end of that line. Not enough that it'll interfere with the workings of that line. Just enough to help this hose slide on, hopefully. Lithium grease would also have worked. Okay, and I want to get that on a good inch or two, two, not one, two inches. And I'm going to slide this hose clamp up. Oh God, I hate the smell of ATF. I think that's my least favorite smell in the entire world. These aren't high pressure lines, so in theory, I shouldn't need a hose clamp. I'm just doing it to be extra sure. All right, 
Now we're gonna take this and run it up with the other lines so that it's obviously not dragging on the ground because then I'm gonna be doing this again in a few months. All right, real simple. You can see I uh, took off this broken line, which is, I'm just leaving it in there. There's no sense pulling it all out. It's gonna be kind of a pain. I'm just gonna leave it there. Replace that on this side with a quarter inch uh, gas line, put on with a hose clamp, traced that all the way back to where it goes into the charcoal canister right there. You can see I did the same thing. That one was a bit of a stretch. Uh, getting it onto the fitting for the charcoal canister. So I definitely had the hose clamp there, but I'm really very confident that that is going to hold it. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. That's all I'm going to do. At this point, if that doesn't do it, um, since I've already eliminated all of the lines and connections inside the engine bay, um, and now I've done the ones that are at the back of the vehicle, if that doesn't do it, I'm going to have to pull down the gas tank. Um, it could be the seal around the gas tank, the one around the uh, fuel pump there. It could be something on the filler neck, um, though I, I took a look at it, I don't, I don't think that's it. Alrighty, I'll just recap. When uh, last we spoke, it was Wednesday night. It's now Saturday afternoon. Here's what happened. Uh, so Wednesday night we did that repair and I drove around Thursday trying to get my monitors to come on. And then Thursday night when I read the codes, I had a pending code for an EVAP small leak. And uh, what I did is I went underneath and I realized that uh, the one hose on the uh, charcoal canister wasn't really on as far as it could be. So I pushed that back on. I haven't had a problem since. Um, so I think that that's where that small leak was coming from. In the meantime, on Friday, I said, screw it. And I went through inspection anyway with the pending code. So all my monitors were ready with the exception of my EVAP monitor. And there was a pending code, but not a confirmed code for a small EVAP leak. And the result is they gave me my inspection. Oh yeah, so now I have plenty of time to figure out what, uh, you know, if any codes come back to figure out what I want to do about them. This thing is good to go until September of 2019. All right, so in my opinion, this was a total success. I wanted to find a way to pass inspection, done. I wanted to find a way to keep the light off, so far so good. Um, and uh, I didn't want to spend a lot and I wanted it to be quick. So uh, what have we learned here? I learned that I can definitely replace that. I think it's like a return line to the gas tank with uh, with soft fuel line. Though if you do it, don't get vacuum line. You got to get the fuel line that has the white cordage inside because uh, that stuff's stronger and it's rated for emissions and gasoline. The other stuff will melt. Uh, we learned that in New Jersey, as of, uh, what is it, December 1st, uh, 2017, you can pass New Jersey inspection with a pending code. All right. Uh, that was something I was wondering about. I didn't know. I mean, it wasn't a confirmed code. My check engine light was not on. The only way I knew was uh, that I looked with my code reader. It's my understanding that XJs are plagued with these emissions uh, issues. It probably has something to do with uh, the fact that they're, a lot of them are pretty old. You know what I mean? They made them from 83 to 2001. So most XJs that are out there are uh, 20 years plus old, 20 to 30 years plus, right? Yeah, geez, wow, that's crazy. Um, so uh, if you are experiencing this, uh, this issue, I say do what I did, uh, look for dry rotted lines, look for rusted hard lines, look for cracks, um, you know, and if you can't find it still, find a local shop that you trust and work with the guy. Be like, listen, I'm not going to bring you the business to fix it, or maybe you are. Uh, how much is going to be just to smoke test it? I don't see any reason why they can't do that for 50, 75, 100 bucks is about the most I'm going to pay someone to smoke test this thing. Uh, there are some ways online that I've seen that you can actually make your own smoke tester with like pieces from a bicycle tube. So I want to look into that. But uh, for right now, this has solved my problem. And if that check engine light comes back on, maybe I'll, I'll look. But uh, so far, so good. No pending code since I tightened it up. Uh, we are really good to go. So, uh, hey, if you guys found this video helpful at all, and I really hope you did, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we will see you next time.